Hello, it's been a while. So, uh, the question that I'm going to answer today is do I need a new camera or will something that's 10 years old do the job for landscape photography? Well, I'm going to find out. join me on this brisk, nicely brisk and cold, uh, yet what has been a beautifully sunny day here on the uh, south coast. And recently I've been playing with some old cameras I've got, you know, little old pocket things and then also an SLR, my first SLR that I bought about 10 years ago, my Pentax K100, K100? K200D. So this K200D that I've got, it's it's been a camera that's travelled the world, travelled around the world with me. I've had some, taken some great memories with it, and I just wondered if it could still do the job today, compared to these crazy technologically advanced pieces of kit. That, that we know and use now. So, let me pull it out the bag for you. You can have a little gander. Look at this thing. How classic is this? Pentax K200 digital camera, 10 megapixel. It's got a crop APS-C sensor in it. And it's not even the new fancy kind of sensor, the CMOS type that all cameras use now. It's the old school CCD type sensor. Looking back at some of these old pictures I've taken, it's like almost a film kind of vibe you get from with these old CCD sensors. They're probably something to do with the Pentax color science. Um, but yeah, the, the JPEG's out of this, because I would always shoot JPEG in auto <laughs> on this thing, because I never knew what I was doing at the time. But um, yeah, a cute JPEG, and um, looking back, some of the pictures, they, they just look great, really liked them. And um, to be honest, this is built like a brick, a workhorse, been around the world with me, and uh, still going strong. So, I want to set this up, because the light is going fast, because we've got this massive bank of cloud behind me, and the sun, even though it's not setting for another half an hour, I don't think we're going to see the sun again and I really wanted to try and test the dynamic range on this thing. So uh, I'm going to set up see what we can do. It's handy when you've got two tripods for this kind of thing. The first thing I'm noticing uh, with the difference between these two cameras uh, and just quickly so we've got the K200D here old school SLR and then this is the Sony a7 III now I thought because this is 10 megapixels it's not really fair to just throw a 42 megapixel camera because we know it's going to beat it the, what I really essentially want to answer is can a 10 year old camera take pictures good enough to, to be able to use and sell you know to be able to print out I mean with 10 megapixels people might be like that's not that's not enough megapixels well really you could easily print a3 and in fact I've got a, a canvas print that's been hanging above my bed for the last 10 years uh, that is what, eight, 80 by 60 centimeters something like that and I've never thought that it looked bad quality so to, to kind of uh, level the playing field a little bit. So this is the a7 III, is a full frame camera, as we all know, 24 megapixels. But if we put it into crop mode, what have we got? We've got a 10 megapixel cropped sensor, which is the same as the one on the K200D. So we're suddenly leveling the playing field. On the front, I've put uh, my dad's old came out 50mm, the classic 50mm 
uh, but I'm going to focus it or um, put the F-stop at 8 because uh, we're looking a long distance. Same F-stop 8 on this uh, lens here on the Sigma 24-105. That's Canon mount by the way with the Sigma MC11 adapter. Uh, so we're leveling the playing field. Now, as, as I was saying, as I was going to say, um, the first thing I've noticed is just with composing uh, these images. Obviously, you've got the screen at the back here, which is nice to use. Obviously, you've got a screen here, but because it's old school SLR, no live view, you've got to look through the eyepiece. And I, on here, on the new one, I can punch in, zoom in, finely tune that focus on here. No, I've got to, got to go old school, think about depth of field and focusing uh, like that. And I could take a test shot and zoom in uh, like that, but it's not as easy. At the end of the day, you know, what did they do before they even had an LCD screen? And they were just shooting film and, and wouldn't even see it until they got back. So. It's a bit of an interesting uh, lesson about how, how far we've come with technology now. But yeah, that is my first uh, issue that I have to, to work around. Really nice evening actually. I've got a, this water. This is the English Channel. In fact, I can just about see France. I'm going to have to zoom in. So yeah, super clear that way. <laughs> uh, overcast here. Sun setting over here. This sea has been super calm today. It just oh, looks perfect. Mill ponds and some nice colours over there. And I've now composed uh, both cameras with a similar uh, composition. Both at 50mm, both at f8, both uh, ISO 100. Now, one problem I'm pretty sure I'm going to hit is uh, with dynamic range. So dynamic range with this one's like 14, 15 stops. This one, nine stops. We could use filters, but what I'm tr trying to kind of get across almost as well is that you don't need to spend a lot of money to take decent landscape images. If you've only got a hundred pounds and you're looking for a camera, well, why should something that's 10 years old stop you from taking good images? I'm not going to use filters, so I'm going to bracket the exposure with this, and then in Lightroom, we can uh, HDR them together, so we've got the whole dynamic range. So that, that's a way round uh, of so not having to use filters uh, in this case. Also, uh, with this camera, when I put it in fully manual mode, I haven't got any exposure uh, dial or live histogram on the a7 III I, I basically just look at the histogram go by that so I know I'm not clipping so I'm actually a stop under with the a7 III here I haven't got a clue so I'll put it in aperture priority mode uh, oh, it's a fully manual lens, it doesn't even know what aperture it's in. But it, it can expose for and it's just going to adjust the shutter speed. So, I'm going to take an exposure, say, 45th of a second. I've got it on two second timer, so I'll do that. And then I can, uh, using this little AV button, I can cycle and move it up two stops, take another shot, and then move it down two shot, stops and take another shot. Shot. I'm going to head home, put these on the computer, and uh, compare, compare and contrast. Does a 10 year old Pentex camera that you can buy for what? I'd be surprised if you'd pay more than 100 quid for that. How does that compare to today's modern edge technology? 
there'll be an interesting answer to come, I'm sure. So here we are in, well, Lightroom basically, and along the bottom here you'll see, well that one's out of focus, here we have uh, the bracketed exposures from the Pentax, and then we've got some bracketed ones that I also did with the Sony, just so we can really compare, and then we came up with this for the Pentax, which is the HDR, and I edited it and warmed up the temperature because it was very cold and then Sony the Sony one the HDR so again uh, temperature up as it was it wasn't as cold but it was, still wasn't right so that was in Lightroom then I exported them out to Photoshop as we can see here and I'm gonna hide what they are from you at the moment this is our first image image a we will call it and here we have image B you'll notice straight away there not the same resolution and also you'll notice between A there and B there's a difference in colors A has uh, much nicer colors I feel if we look at like the red on the bricks of this house and also these kind of browns in the tree here and, and look at the grass as well, the greenness of the grass. We go to the other one, the grass is a bit a bit blander, the, the brick doesn't pop as much and this brown is definitely not the same. I'm going to put that down to the difference in sensors and colour signs. Now before I reveal which is which, uh, let's dig a bit deeper. So let's zoom in on this house. We've got good contrast, it's sharp, and you know, good clarity. Apart from the colours, it's a nice quality image. And if we put A back on, we can see that it's, it's a bit softer, not quite as sharp. Let's zoom in on the power station. It's Dungeness Power Station, by the way, looking glorious with the sun and we've got uh, two uh, lighthouses this is the original but when they built the power station in the 60s uh, it blocked out <laughs> they couldn't be seen from certain angles so they built had to build uh, this newer one here just a little <laughs> side info for you right so we're looking at picture A and now picture B picture A camera A even, camera B and I don't know if YouTube is going to compress the hell out of this and you're really not going to be able to tell the difference but from me looking at it the colours of A look nicer but also camera A is softer but that is going to be down to the lens basically it might not be the best lens or the best aperture setting and also comparing so we're on camera B camera A is showing signs of noise whereas camera B very smooth uh, nice sharp edges but the colors just don't look as good so if you haven't guessed already camera A this one we're on here is the Pentax and this one is the Sony now the question I posed and wanted to answer was is this 10 year old camera good enough to use to print to sell pictures personally I think it is I think it's done an amazing job um, in fact talking about colors it definitely looked better I mean I was talking about earlier the that kind of color science and that almost filmic look well, and people talk about the Canon colours all the time, don't they? Well, uh, to me, this definitely kind of opened my eyes a little bit to to um, colour science a bit more. Uh, I just really like the 
the colours just pop that little bit more. It definitely looks more aut autumnal uh, in the trees, especially in the grass. The sky, I wouldn't say there's much difference in it. Uh, if anything, on the Pentax, the clouds are a little bit bluer uh, than the Sony. Uh, the reds in the sky look exactly the same to me. It's just when it comes down to those greens. So basically, the answer to the question is yes. If this 10-year-old camera, this Pentax, they're really good. I'm actually really impressed. Conclusion, final conclusion. A 10-year-old camera is still doing its job today. As good as it ever was. So, if you want to get into landscape photography, you don't need a lot of money. It's about understanding the limitations of the camera and finding ways to work around them. So with the Pentax, it has more limited megapixels, uh, more limited dynamic range. But with the megapixels, you can, you can create a panorama. You can take more than one shot and then you can stick them together and the same with the dynamic range. You can take multiple exposures and blend them together in Lightroom or Photoshop and you will end up with results once printed out that no one's really going to notice. And it goes back to uh, the thing about if you're going to spend money, spend it on the lens because looking at that, it's definitely softer, but that's, that's down to the lens. So put your money in the lens, not the camera itself, because with landscape especially, you just do everything manual. Manual focus, shutter, manual aperture, just everything's manual. You don't need to shoot 20 frames a second. You just don't. You just need raw and a bit of knob. So there we go. That is the conclusion and uh, thanks for watching um, if you want to subscribe subscribe if you don't you don't, you don't have to it's just, it's just me messing around with uh, with an old Pentax um, yeah don't really know what to say um, 